Miles taught that laws, <clears throat> excuse me, are uh, everywhere that we look. Anything and everything that was ever created is governed by a law. Um, for example, if uh, if I buy a, a pet fish, I bring that pet fish home. Um, I have to put that pet fish in water because the fish strives, lives in water. I can't put a leash on the on the pet fish and, and tie it to the fence because the fish is not a dog. The fish is a fish, and there's laws that govern how that fish can survive on the planet. Um, another example is just our, our solar system. Um, the solar system was created, and th- that solar system um, obviously has laws that it um, is governed by because if not, the planets would crash into each other. And, and as a matter of fact, we couldn't even place someone on the moon because we wouldn't know how to get them there because um, the moon would be all over the place. But there are specific laws that govern where that moon is relative to where we are so we can uh, have calculations, we can we can we can build a, a rocket ship, and and we can send that ship to, um, or send that aircraft to the moon, and actually get out and walk on it again because there are laws that govern um, everything that was created. And when we understand law, and when we understand um, how laws affect business, um, when we understand how laws affect money, uh, then we will maximize our potential in those areas. Again, anything that's ever been created has some type of law that governs it. Um, just one more example to help help uh, make sure that, you know, we get this point. Um, you know, farmers, when they, they plant certain seeds at certain times um, because um, they know that if they plant that seed, they water it and the sun shines on it, then you know, it's going to grow out of the ground. Um, so there again is another example that there are specific laws that govern, you know, what happens to that seed when it's planted and then it comes out of the ground, uh, bears some type of fruit or vegetable, and then we get to eat it. So just some some, some specific characteristics about a law. Um, a law is, is finite. So you can't break it down anymore. You can't uh, it's like a, it's like an element, you know. It's like oxygen. You can't break oxygen down anymore. So a law t- typically is finite, and again, that law governs, you know, something. Um, and again, we said that laws, um, uh, you know, they govern something. So a law is put in place to to govern um, a creation or to. So if your business um, has specific laws associated with it. The products or services that you have. Or that you offer, that you sell, they have specific laws associated with those products and those services. So if you operate within the laws of those products and those services relative to the, the creation and the distribution um, and the sale and the, the, the service associated with those that product and that service, if you operate within the laws of your business, then you will see success. But if you don't operate within the laws, of that business, then you won't see success. Laws don't discriminate. Um, the the law of gravity could care less who throws something up into the air. So if a black person, a white person, an Asian person, um, a Martian throws something up into the air, guess what? It's that something is going to fall to the ground. Um, it doesn't discriminate in terms of what you throw into the air. You can throw an 18-wheeler truck into the air it's going to come to the ground, or you can throw uh, a pebble in the air, and it's going to come to the ground. So those are just um, three characteristics of, of of laws, right? They're finite, um, they govern everything, and they don't discriminate. I'm going down this road because you need to understand that laws do govern everything. So therefore, instead of um, um, you know breaking your neck trying to figure out you know, which direction you should go relative to your product or your service in, in business. If you understand um, the laws of your business, then that's where you're going to find the greatest success and operate and function within the laws of, of your business. One of the greatest books ever written when it comes to leadership, in my opinion, is the uh, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership written by John Maxwell. 
And it is, in my opinion, the most important book ever written about leadership because, again, it discusses law. Because if you understand, you tap into the law of, of something, then you will successful. You will be successful in that because you you you've gotten to the bottom of things. You've you've boiled all the fluff um, out of the way, and you are working with the uh, the pure ingredients relative to whatever the topic is. Again, it could be leadership. It could be it could be music. It it, it could be business. It could be money. Uh, it could be fatherhood, motherhood, whatever it is. If you understand the laws associated with that thing, you will be successful. Um, so when it comes to understanding the laws relative to whatever it is you're focusing on, you need to know what to do, right? So you need to know what to do, which is really important. So back to the farmer. So the farmer needs to know what seed to plant in the soil where that person Resides. The next thing is you need to know when to do it. You can't plant, um, um, you know, certain seeds certain during certain times of the year. You just can't because they won't come up because of the climate, because of um, the lack of rain, because of maybe too much rain. So you have to know when to do it. So, again, we're talking about understanding um, the laws associated with your specific discipline. Um, so, and then lastly, um, you have to know why you're doing something. So I need to know what to do. I need to know when to do it. And I need to know why I'm doing it because the why is really important as well. Um, because if I'm doing something and I don't necessarily understand the why, if there are problems that come up or challenges that come up associated with what I'm doing at that particular juncture, um, if I don't understand the why, then I may not understand how to navigate that river. I may not understand how to navigate those problems, navigate those situations and those circumstances. So the why is very important as well. Um, so with that said, what I want to do is I want to talk about one of the laws of leadership, specifically for um, entrepreneurs, that I think is is so critical, so crucial, and that's the law of navigation. The law of navigation. See, as an entrepreneur, there are three things, again, that must be present if leadership is present, in my opinion. Um, you have to have followers. So if you don't have any followers, then you, what are you leading or who are you leading? Um, you have to have influence. So let's say you have followers, but they don't help you move towards um, your goals and your objectives, right? And then lastly, you have to have goals and objectives or you have to have vision. So followers must be present, influence must be there, and then you must have a vision, right? So those three, things have, those three things need to be present in order for leadership to be present. So I want to talk about helping – I want to help you help um, the folks that you lead get to your vision. And, and the law of navigation points directly to that. And, you know, anyone can, can steer ship, uh, but it takes a leader to chart a course. And, and I liken that to having a GPS in your car. So anyone can be in that car steering and, and following the instructions that the GPS gives them, but can anyone create the directions like the GPS, the left turn, the right turn? Um, and now, you know, many GPSs will tell you when the, there's heavy traffic or they will automatically detour you um, from a bad situation on the highway, right? So, you know, anyone can navigate or drive, but but can you become the GPS for your followers? Can you give them specific directions to get to the vision? Um, and, and doing that, you have to be prepared, you have to constantly be in a mode of preparation. You have to be proactive when it comes to your vision. Having a vision, period, that, that's a proactive experience. That's not a reactive experience. No one reacts <laughs> to their vision. Everyone's vision, uh, again, that's a pro proactive activity because you have to, you know, um, have an idea of, of where you want to go. Um, navigation also requires reflection. So we want to we, we we have an idea of where we want to go, and um, in helping us understand where we want to go, we reflect on where we were. We reflect on where we were 
in the past. Okay, so um, a lot, or almost everything, when it comes to creating that roadmap or or that list of directions to help your leaders help you get to uh, the endpoint or or your division has everything to do with with planning ahead. Um, and there's a little acronym um, that we have broken out for you. That's plan a, plan ahead, and that the, the P in plan ahead is is predetermined. You're going to predetermine a course of action. Again, I'm going to be proactive, not reactive. You're going to lay out your goals. You're going to lay out your goals. Why do we have goals? Um, we have goals so we, we, we know where we're going. So all of our activities, anything that we do, any money that we spend in business, they should tie directly to our goals. They should tie directly to where we want to be. Uh, we have to adjust our priorities. I have this conversation quite regularly. I, I, I have a challenge with, with balance. I believe that we have a specific subset of things that are really important to us, and then from time to time we shift our priorities or we adjust our priorities, right? So you have to – the A is for adjust your priorities. The N is for – you have to notify key personnel. First of all, you have to have key personnel. You have to have people in your inner, inner circle that you consider key. And then you have to notify them from time to time to help you make changes and adjustments as you're going down this road, um, as you're navigating towards your vision. Um, the A in a head is allow time for acceptance. The folks that you're leading, they have to have time to buy in to your vision. You have to communicate it very, very clearly, but then you got to allow them time to buy in. The H in a head is um, head into action. You have to execute. You can talk about it all day long, but you have to move towards um, towards that goal and as evidenced by, by acting on it. Um, you have to expect problems. Oftentimes we plan and we have a vision and we plan um, tasks and, and we plan ideas for everything that's going to work out perfect, but rarely do we plan for what might go wrong. So I want you to spend some time planning um, or expecting problems and plan for the things that might go wrong. So when they go wrong, you've already planned for it. You've already talked about it. You're ready to execute to eliminate those problems. The A in ahead is always point to success. A leader has a winning attitude all the time, so you're always pointing to success. You're not pointing to failures. You're not, you're not rehearsing failures. You're not even thinking about failures. You're thinking about your wins. You're focusing on your wins, so you're always pointing to success. And then the D in plan ahead is daily review of your plan. You're going to constantly review your plan because your plan may need to change based on the current environment and based on other um, extenuating factors. Um, so that's plan ahead. Um, lastly, um, when, you, you know, I, I feel the need to talk about reflecting um, because, again, we talked about this earlier. Uh, our thoughts um, help create, will we'll build something up or will tear something down. So um, it's easy to reflect on negative um, happenings or negative things that took place in our life. You need to, to focus on those positive things. If you're going to reflect on anything, re, you know, reflect on the good things. Or even in your failures, reflect on the things that you learned in your failures so that you can, you know, fail forward. And keep success in perspective. Uh, lastly, keep success in perspective. Success means something different to every single person on the planet. Keep what it means to you in perspective and, and stay focused um, in that area 